Okay, then um, the next question I had is, is medical coding and billing a career where I can work from home? Absolutely, and I think I had a little secondary question. Um, oh, maybe not. So I was starting to write remote coding. Um, when I first started to teach people and I would get asked this question a lot, I'd say, yeah, you really need to do your time and work at least two years before you could start to even apply for remote coding positions. But that's changed. There are many companies now that, um, especially for risk adjustment coding, where they are not only hiring a lot of remote coders, they're willing to hire newly certified remote coders. Mm -hmm. So they do want you to be certified, but um, because there's such a demand for it, and that's not the only field. There are, um, you know, a via code, uh, the coding network, I know there's some other names, but they hire remote coders. They, they would prefer experience, but if you're proficient, if you have some way to demonstrate prof proficiency in the specialties that they're coding for, then let them know that. Now I know, um, you know, AAPC has the Practicode. We used to be a reseller for Practicode, um, but AAPC bought it uh, this summer, and they have broken out the modules by specialty. So what we used to tell people when they took Practicode through our course, the medical coding practicum, is you should somehow get a proficiency score. I'm not sure if that's how the AAPC one worked, but that's how ours worked. Take that score and put that on your resume. I'm 92% proficient at cardiology coding or whatever that report is. Print it out, put it in your portfolio when you go for your, your job interview or include it with your cover letter and, and resume if you're mailing it in and even if you're emailing it in as an attachment, you could still do it. Um, they might not know what that means. They might say, what do you what do you mean proficient? Like they know what proficiency means, but they might it might not translate to anything they ever saw. That's your opportunity to explain it. Say, mm -hmm. I might not have been working for a cardiologist or a cardiology practice, but I did all these cases to where I, you know, was rated being 92% proficient. That will mean something. So use it. Don't just do it for yourself. Put it on your resume and um, let them ask you about it. So. so definitely it is a career where you can work from home. But it's, you know, you might, depending on your area, want to start locally where you are rubbing elbows with other coders and you can learn from them. Not to say that you can't learn remotely. CCO is completely remote and we are in touch with each other all day long asking questions, how would you do this, and we are definitely learning from each other. But, um, but not all organizations are, are that way. Mm -hmm. um, and the other thing that you've got to keep in mind, working from home sounds wonderful if you've never done it to most people, right? Oh my gosh, that would be awesome. Well, you could be Loreen and be begging for a door to your office if you don't have a door, right? The other thing that you've got to remember is working from home isn't necessarily, um, doesn't mean, oh, I don't have to pay for childcare anymore because you still have to hit a quota. You still have to do a lot of things and it can actually sometimes be more intensive than if you were going to an office every day. Um, as far as what is demanded or what is required of you in your time. So you've definitely got to have the right mindset for it and be prepared for that. Um, I'm somebody that's done it off and on for years, so I, I totally understand that. My mom is one of those that she's a coder. She works from home. She loves it, right? And she actually, the department that she works in, she worked at the same hospital for years, not always as a coder. My mom started out in accounting. Um, and had done that for years and got into the coding thing about five or six years ago. But when she started in the department she's in, she had to go into the office a couple of days a week and could work from home a couple of days a week. And then now she's finally to the point where she can work from home full time. Mm -hmm. And a lot of hospitals do that. They want, they want to see you in the environment, be able to produce enough, pass your quality checks, those sorts of things while you're in the office with other people that can monitor your work a little more easily, answer your question, those sorts of things. And then when you prove yourself, then you'll be allowed to work from home, but you still are going to have to continue to prove yourself through quotas and, you know, things like that. Yep, definitely. And Barb says, she's, she's I'm working in my pajamas right now. <laughs> and I'll share something funny. The other day, uh, Boyd and Chandra and I were on 
<laughs> and I had this nice dressy blouse and I had to turn and he, he didn't like the way my chair looked back here so I went to fix it and then they saw that I was actually wearing plaid jammy bottoms <laughs> so we had a good laugh about that but um, yeah you can be very comfortable working at home but they also heard me singing when we got on all I wish well, for Christmas is my door to my office door to <laughs> <laughs> because I've got four kids and I'm right here in the middle of the house and you know I'm too accessible so there's there's pros and cons but um, me personally I wouldn't trade it I still um, love working from home and being remote but um, it, other challenges are sometimes you don't know when to clock off you know I'm like I feel like I'm always kind of working and plugged in and you know it's very hard for me just to kind of you know um, just turn the computer off because if the computer's off then I'm off <laughs> but um, that's probably more of a personal balance issue than anything.